part three, chapter seven. The gnomes are rude again. The mouses ran across the sunny meadow. The grass was tall and waved in the wind. It smelled sweet and wholesome. Thistles and orange poppies were growing tall too. They slipped under the fence and entered the forest. It was cool and shady. Finally, they reached the old pine tree where the gnomes lived. <coughs> Went Jeremy Mouse on their door. Go away, said a voice. But it's me, said Jeremy Mouse. And us, shouted the mouselings. And me, said Jemima Mouse. We're not home, said the voice. Pepper Pot, I know it's you, said Jeremy Mouse. We've come for a visit. Open the door. No, said Pepper Pot. Pinecone, what's going on, said Jemima Mouse. What's wrong with Pepper Pot? Why is he so grumpy? Because, said Pinecone, and um, I'm not at home either. That's silly, said all the mouselings. We can hear you. You are home. No, we're not, said Pepper Pot. You have to come back when, when, when the time comes. When the time comes? But when is that? asked Jeremy Mouse. After, said Pinecone. Definitely after. After what? asked Jeremy Mouse. After the time comes, said Pinecone. Where's Tiptoes? asked Jemima Mouse. We came to find Tiptoes. A cookie is blocking our door and we cannot get inside. She went to see Turpentine, said Pinecone. She has to find out something. What did she go to find out? Asked Jemima. Nothing, said Pepper Pot. You are acting all so very odd, said Jemima. What is happening? Nothing, said Pinecone. Nothing at all, said Pepper Pot. Come back later. After the nothing is over. The mouses sat near Pinecone and Pepper Pot's house. They weren't sure what to do. They needed to find tiptoes, but they didn't want to leave the cookie for too long. It smelled so delicious that the others would be sure to notice it. This feels like the tail of the brown and crispy cookie, said Jeremy Mouse. What tail is that? asked all the mouselings. It's about a cookie who thought he was too good to be eaten, said Jeremy. What happened? What happened? cried all the mouselings. There was once a cookie, said Jeremy. It was baking in an oven and got brown and crispy. He thought this was fine. This was a fine and extraordinary thing altogether. Look at how brown and crispy I am, said the cookie. The best brown and crispiest crisp, the crispiest crispy that there ever was. I'm too good to be eaten. You have to be eaten, cried all the other cookies in the oven. That's what cookies are for. That's what makes the world go round. Not me, said the cookie. I'm brown and I'm crispy. I am special. And as soon as the oven door opened, out he hopped and he rolled right away. Stop, come back, cried the cook, chasing after the cookie. But the cookie did not stop. And down the road, he rolled with the cook running after him. Just then, a dog spied the cookie and the cook. Woof, 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 barked the dog and ran after the cookie too. A 
cat saw the cookie rolling along with the cook and dog running after him. Meow, meow, said the cat and ran after the cookie too. A rat saw the cookie rolling along with the cook and dog and cat running after him. Said the, tw said the rat twitching his whiskers and he ran after that cookie too. Last of all, a mouse saw the cookie rolling along with the cook and dog and cat and rat running after him. And the mouse cried, come here, Mr. Cookie. It's safe in my house and into the mouse's house. The cookie rolled. Phew, said the cookie, panting hard. <laughs> that was a close. They almost had me. Now the mouse had a mouse wife and five little mouselings. Their eyes opened wide when they saw the yummy cookie rolling into their very own house. Yummy cookie, they cried. Looks tasty. I cannot be eaten, said the cookie. I'm special. I'm brown and I'm crispy and running away from a cat. Mouses can't eat cookies which are running away from cats. So the mouse and his mouse wife and all the mouselings let the cookie live with them. It was a terrible time for the mice. Their whiskers twitched, their noses sniffed, and their tails curled round and round, and their tongues watered day and night. Finally, the mouse and his family went out for a walk one day to get away from the delicious cookie. But when they got back, the cookie was gone and their house swarmed with ants. They'd eaten the whole thing. And that is why we should eat the cookie now, said Jeremy Mouse, because if we don't, somebody else will eat it for us. That's a nice story, said Jemima Mouse, but no one is touching that cookie. We are saving it for Midsummer's Eve. I think we should talk to Tiptoes first. So off the mouses scurried through the woods towards Turpentine, Turpentine's tree. Tiptoes was in Turpentine's house. He lived in a ponderosa pine. Turpentine had amber yellow hair, amber yellow eyes, amber yellow skin, pine green clothes, and cinnamon red shoes. He smelled of pine resin on a warm, sunny day. Drops of amber colored sweat dripped from his brow onto the floor and ran out the door, but he did not seem to mind. I love hot days, said Turpentine. The forest smells so nice. Tiptoes nodded and smiled. She was standing on tiptoes, trying to avoid the resin on the floor. It was sticky. How do you get resin out of beards? she asked. Out of beards, said Turpentine. Who would put resin in their beards? That's batty. I can't say, said Tiptoes, but their beards are full of it and all tangled up. I bet it's pine cone and pepper pot, chuckled Turpentine. They are always landing themselves in trouble. Maybe, said Tiptoes, but how do you get resin out of beards? Pine resin is good for you, said Turpentine, wiping his brow. At least for some things, it used to be used for medicines, and it still is. But how do you get it out of beards, asked Tiptoes. Out, out, 
I doubt they'll get it out, said Turpentine. It's sticky, horribly sticky, terribly sticky, wonderfully sticky. It's supposed to be sticky. It protects the pine trees when they're injured. And it also can be used as a glue. Did you know that it lasts for years? Thousands of years. If it's buried underground for long enough, it turns into amber. Amber is so pretty. It makes lovely jewelry. Gorgeous. Such a foxy color. Tiptoes smiled. It was hard to talk to Turpentine in the summer, especially on hot days. He got giddy. And in winter, when it was cold, he became so slow, it took an hour to say one sentence. Is there no way to get resin out of beards? Asked Tiptoes one last time. <sighs> Turpentine shrugged. But why? He asked. It is so useful. Did you know? that people humans make turpentine from it. They used my name because I told them how to do it. I whispered it in their ears. They think they thought of the name, silly, silly, and it's good for starting fires, for cuts, and for, bye, called Tiptoes, flying out of the house. Bye, Tiptoes, said Turpentine. Come and see me soon. Spring and fall is best. Tiptoes flew upwards into the sunlight. Her golden yellow wings glittered and shone above the green forest. The afternoon was wearing on, and the gnomes were still stuck together. And what about Jeremy and Jemima Mouse and all of the mouselings? She'd almost forgotten about them. Where were they to stay on Midsummer's Eve? Oh dear, oh dear, sighed Tiptoes. What are we going to do? And that's it for that, but I want to show you the picture of Turpentine. Melting, sticky, in the warm, warm heat. And this is Tiptoes saying, what am I to do? Let's see, there's a couple more. Here's pictures of the ants and all of the friends that were chasing the cookie and the mouse family. There's the dog and the cat and the rat and the mouse talking to the cookie. And there's the mouse family. Here's, here's the cookie rolling away. Look at that face. And here, it's one last picture. Mouse family.